This is Scott Bozarth. My submission for FTT 210 for Sonoran Desert Institute. It's the week eight recap of what is basically part one of the muzzleloader build. FTT 220 will finish it up with uh, finishing the steel and the stock, polishing the brass and putting it all back together. So the following is just a recap, nothing really new. If you've been uh, following along and watching the last four videos, it's just snippets of those. Uh, this is all for the class. Just to turn it in. Um, as far as a couple things that I did learn through this project, steaming out dents, definitely worth knowing how to do and something that I'll use later on in uh, my career or just hobby, whatever this turns into. And another thing that I'll end up using is uh, card scrapers, different levels of sandpaper, uh, spoke shaves, all the different methods, rasp, file, everything that there is to to remove material off of a wood stock to shape it. Um, a lot of these jobs that seem intimidating really aren't that hard as long as you have the right tools. Not saying you're gonna be an expert or I am anything near, but it really does make a difference when you have the right tools in hand. So uh, just keep following along and uh, whenever I get into the next class, we will uh, finish this thing up if you're keeping track, thanks. We started out by using this uh, kind of blue permatex that came in the muzzleloader kit to inlet the lock. Uh, here I'm showing you, I had already done it, so I was kind of going through what I did. You put, apply this paint to the outside edge and then you put it into the inletting. This stock came semi-inlet. And then you will see the uh, color transfer. Again, I had already done it here, so and then I'm showing that I used the uh, file as a scraper because it was actually pretty close um, from the kit. And then you can see that the lock fits in there um, nice and snug, but it doesn't take a lot to, to take it out. Here, um, demonstrating how I polished the brass, we'll say not, not really polished, but uh, cleaned it up. It came with some casting marks on it. And so I'm just showing that I used some sandpaper uh, at first I used a file for the bigger casting marks and then I used some uh, 120 and 220 grit sandpaper with this aluminum block backer that I have. And when you're doing this sort of thing, polishing steel, you want to go uh, one direction with it. And then as you move up in grits, then you're going to go across um, and then just keep changing directions by about 90 degrees. With the brass all cleaned up, the next step was to inlet the butt plate, which you can see I put the inletting blue on and uh, put it onto the stock and gave it kind of a tap with the rubber mallet. That's what I'm showing here, and you can see the color transfer there. So uh, I took some material down, and you'll see that here in a second. There you go. And uh, called that a pretty consistent transfer of the inletting blue. Uh, you can see I got a little deep in a couple spots, but later on I fixed that um, when I was sanding and, and shaping the, the buttstock. You'll see that when we get to that portion of the video. And fits pretty tight on the left side. Uh, the next step was to install the toe plate. So I lined it up about where I thought it should be, made a pencil mark on it, and then removed that material with a chisel, pretty straightforward, and then drilled pilot holes with all these and covered the screws in beeswax to protect the inside of the stock and also just to let the screws go in a little bit easier so they don't split the wood. Here we are uh, inletting the um, trigger assembly and this part, again, it was it was already pretty close, so I put it in there and there's not much transfer. A little bit. Um, I used uh, this regular flat chisel where I could because it's easier for me to sharpen these flat chisels. I've still got a pra uh, quite a bit of practice to do with um, sharpening curved chisels, and you'll see the trigger function check there. Everything works as it should. Here's the trigger guard. Um, I set it on there and I used some inletting blue and here I am using the curved gouge to clean that up and uh, I did have a little bit of a tear out 
uh, I have to admit. And it's all because I, I'm just not that good at sharpening those curved gouges yet, but we'll get there. Um, so I got it all fit in there nice and snug, just a little tap. Um, yeah. All right, so we're going to start shaping the back of the stock. And I started by cleaning up the toe plate and the butt plate with this file. And um, you'll see here uh, that went pretty quick. And then uh, here I am shaping the butt stock. There was quite a bit of material to remove. So I went back and forth, uh, cleaned up pretty good actually there. You can see that gap cleaned up. But uh, I went back and forth between a um, uh, farrier's rasp, which is used on horse hooves. You'll see that here. And then also uh, the four in hand, which is another great tool. And it's basically got a rasp and a half round rasp, a file and a half round file. And you can do a lot of work with this little guy. Um, there's that spot where I kind of had the tear out. Very small and I should be able to fix it with some uh, wood glue and sawdust or some kind of putty. But overall, that's the shaping of the rear of the stock. Uh, again, it's not finished sanded. It's just uh, it's just shaped, and I'm pretty happy with how it how it turned out so far. Uh, the, that brass is nowhere near finished polished yet, so I'll go ahead and do that in the next class. Uh, right, so here we're installing the front thimble, and I used my calipers to find the center of the bottom flat of the barrel channel because that's an octagonal barrel. So that made it pretty easy to find the center so that I could lay out where to drill the hole for the thimble. I didn't need to do much shaping or inletting. I did clean the thimble up and again, it just more or less dropped into place. Um, a little bit out of frame here, but what I'm doing here is um, just finding the center line in the bottom of the barrel channel and I just go ahead and make a mark. It's funny, I, I kind of laughed to myself a few times as I was taking measurements down to the thousandth of an inch and then come through with a pencil that, you know, is ten thousandths thick. But that's the reloader in me, I guess. You use what uh, measuring tools you have. Uh, there you could see that I drilled the hole and installed it. The screw was sticking through the thimble a little bit, so I had to back it off and grind it down. And, uh, and then I got it in how it is. Uh, so this is the barrel tenons. Um, that looks like the front barrel tenon there. And um, it was just explaining that I did some measurements and that's where that tenon's gonna fit down into the barrel channel. There's room for it. And then we're gonna drill through the sides of the stock. And I'll show that here in a second to push these pins through. Now we drill through the stock and through the barrel tenons and you put those pins through and that actually is what holds the barrel in place inside the stock. Um, there's a front and a rear barrel tenon. And here we can see I've got the drill marks laid out. Uh, that's where we're going to drill the hole for the rear barrel tenon. And that is the front barrel tenon. It wasn't too hard to make these transfers. Um, measurement transfers and there you can see I drilled and installed the uh, barrel tenon pins and it holds the barrel in place nicely. I can flip it upside down and shake it and it doesn't come falling out. It's actually in there nice and snug. I did have to inlet the tang on the uh, on the barrel a little bit back by the lock in order to get it fit a uh, uh, perfect fit there but overall uh, the stock fits pretty well. And uh, so I removed the barrel and I'm just showing, I, I put the front thimble on there and I had to do the same thing. The screw was a bit long, so I put it in there, marked it, took it out and then filed it down to the perfect fit so that I can verify that my uh, ramrod will go through these thimbles as it's intended without getting hung up. And there you go, you can see just one finger and in she goes. So I'd call that a success. Um, now we're gonna fit the nose cap. And the, uh, we'll call it the tenon that stuck out of, of the barrel was a bit long. 
I'm sorry, the nose cap was a bit long for the tenon that, that stuck out. So I decided to take some material down and in doing so, it kind of went a little bit out of square and it was, it was a bit of a fight going back and forth. And I finally got it uh, where I was happy with it and then um, put some Sharpie on there as contrast, measured the thickness of the nose cap, split the difference uh, with the calipers there to find center and then scribe a line. And that showed me where I, what line, uh, center line I needed to do my, uh, my punch here so that I could drill my holes. And, yep, got her chopped up in the vise and uh, drilled my holes through there. Did uh, countersink the, kind of skipped over that part, but I countersunk them a little bit on the outside and the screws are in there nice. They do stick slightly proud. I went ahead and, and ground those down. Here you can see a dent that I had in the stock. I was pretty lucky, most of the dents sanded out, but that one I had to steam out, so I just put a wet rag over it. Regular old household iron set to cotton, which is about the highest setting, and uh, steamed that dent right out. I was thoroughly impressed. This is, a, this is a method that I learned in this class that I'm definitely going to be using um, throughout my the rest of my life here working on guns uh, super effective now that won't work for a gouge but for a dent where it just pushed the material in it works great it just makes those uh, wood fibers swell up expand and then they stay where they're supposed to be I had another little one there on the four stock that I steamed out and then here we're just doing the uh, final sanding I had shaped the the forend there already and I just am um, using my backer block and sanding it down. Um, not the, not the, I should say not the final sanding, but sanding it to uh, 180 grit. Um, so there it is. Uh, we're pretty much done with FTT 210. The next step is FTT 220 where we'll actually finish the stock, polish the brass, and finish the barrel. Um, the recommended, I need to get into the syllabus and see what we can do, but the recommendation is browning. Uh, I'd like to rust blue it, but we'll do what the class says to do. Another thing that I think they want us to do is use this Birchwood KC Walnut Stain uh, and True Oil to finish it. But again, I, you know, maybe I could use some Alkanet Root Oil that I'm trying to make right now, but it really doesn't matter. I'll, I'll do whatever the syllabus says.